DJI just released this little guy. Uh, the early videos I've seen look pretty awesome. It's got great stabilization and stuff like that. But today I wanna see if this camera is actually capable of doing full vlogs, full YouTube videos all on its own. So if that's something you're interested in, I mean, you made it this far, you might as well just watch the video. Let's go. Now before I get started, I just wanna point out one more important thing, which is that this video is not sponsored in any way. DJI did not send me this camera. DJI does not know who I am. No one's gonna control anything I say in this video. I find this guy very easy to hold. I mean, it fits quite easily in the palm of your hand. Uh, if you don't want this casing, you guys probably know how this works, but like very easy to, or not so easy, come on. <laughs> very easy, relatively easy to pop it out of the casing. If you wanted to, you could just walk around holding it like this. This just kind of feels too small. It feels like, even though it does have quite good um, gripping on it, which is one nice thing, it's not so smooth that it's like, you know, a piece of butter that's gonna slip away. But yeah, this just gives it like a little extra comfort when you're holding it. Or if you wanna put it down on a flat surface, like this toilet paper, which is conveniently here, uh, you, can just, you can just place it, you know. I like it. And this piece, this piece came in the packaging. So you don't get too much with the Osmo. You get a couple cables, you get a couple of little whatchamacallits, these guys. But I find for daily walk around use, it's just kind of nice to hold it. Okay, here we go. We got the audio now on the Osmo Action. Um, hopefully it sounds okay. I haven't done really any audio tests before, so once again, this will be new for me as well. And you gotta, you gotta, you gotta remember that the audio on a little camera like this is never going to be as good as a big camera like this. It's just not. It's it's a limitation of the form factor. Unless they actually wanted to put a headphone jack, no, not a headphone jack, a mic input into the Osmo Action, and then have a little microphone on top. But I don't think like DJI is really thinking about stuff like that. I'm just gonna show you now what it sounds like with the casing on. It should sound about the same, to be honest. As long as I am, and this is very important, don't like, don't hold it like this and move your hands around because then you're probably gonna get some really bad scratchy noises in the audio. Whenever possible, just hold it. Just hold it steady like this, you know. You don't need to baby it, like you can, you can go like this. Uh, it's, it's okay to move around. It's just, it's just a matter of, are you kind of scratching against the outer casing? Cause that will cause bad audio. Mm. All right guys, here we are. It's a beautiful spring day in Vancouver. The sun is out. And let's just get the very obvious out of the way. Check out this electric stabilization. It's really the main reason that I bought this camera. I think DJI calls it rock steady mode or something equally dorky. Doesn't really matter what they call it. The point is it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's rock steady, I guess. I don't, I don't know, guys, it's really smooth. Anyway, yeah, as I said, this thing does great with the stabilization. No question about that. Uh, but as I was filming that, I started to get hungry, so I decided to get some food and keep filming on this camera as I would a normal vlog, as I do the most narcissistic thing on Earth, which is film myself eating. Let's go. <laughs> Alright, so as I was eating that delicious, albeit slightly overpriced, bowl of ramen, uh, I had a chance to test out the time lapse feature. I, I won't know how good the quality is until I've actually seen it on the big screen. I will say that it's incredibly easy to set up a time lapse because you have 
Well, you have the front facing screen, which allows you to frame the shot no matter which way you are facing. While I'm sitting here on this bright sunny day, I wanted to test another feature, which is how well the camera can handle sunlight. So as you guys can see, it's a bright sunny day and here it is. As I face the sun. That's how it looks with the sun directly behind me. And now as I turn into a better lit position, that's how it looks. By the way, on the subject of how things look, this is kind of holding the camera in a fairly natural position. So it's probably pretty cropped in on my face here. But if I wanted to stretch my arm all the way out, it would be more like that. And now you got a kind of wide angle look. It seems to be doing fairly well with the different light conditions. You're also gonna see more of that stabilization. Um, I'm walking down a decline right now, which if I had my DSLR or even like my cell phone, you'd be seeing a lot of up and down movement. So actually, I'm gonna look like a total dork to anyone who's looking at me holding a phone and a camera right now, but All right, let me just try filming something with my cell phone to show you the difference. You see how bumpy that is? I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not trying to move my hand at all. This is as steady as I can keep it. Whereas with the Osmo, it's just like walking on a cloud, you know? Really impressive stabilization. What else can I say? By the way, I'm filming all this in uh, 2.7K. This camera is capable of 4K up to 60 frames per second, uh, which even my big heavy DSLR camera can't do. So that's pretty impressive. But yeah, just to keep the file sizes down, I'm filming in 2.7K right now. Anyway, while we're here on this bright sunny day, I want to talk about something else, which is the screen brightness. Some cameras, the LCD screen really has trouble in brightly lit situations. This camera, the Osmo Action, the screen seems to be just fine for my, for my needs. And I just discovered by accident a pretty cool feature, which is that you can adjust the screen brightness just by kind of pushing your thumb up or I guess down on the screen itself. That is not the front screen, but the back screen. Anyway guys, we have some decent wind coming at me now, so you're gonna get a first taste of how this actually sounds in a windy environment. But I also wanted to point out one more thing about the screen that is, uh, I guess a small, very small issue. And it's that sometimes I'll be looking at my back screen and it will be off and I'll think that my camera isn't recording, but actually I'd set it to the front screen because just the way I vlog, the way I hold this, I like to switch, you know, see some scenery, see some stuff that's out there, and then switch it back to me. But the, the camera doesn't know which way I'm facing. So if I have it set to the front screen, it sticks on the front screen until I hold the side button for two seconds, which I just did, and now it's gonna switch to the back screen. So I say this is a very small issue because I'm sure it's something I'll get used to. Maybe in the future AI will be good enough that it'll be able to sense which way you're holding it and automatically make the switch. But uh, yeah, maybe maybe the Osmo Action 2 will have that feature available. I don't know. Oh, what a beautiful day, huh? Another selling point of the DJI Osmo Action is the slow motion. Uh, obviously it does slow-mo and 240 frames per second, which is really slow. Uh, I tried it on myself as I was just walking down the street. I tried it on people walking by and, you know, it, it definitely, definitely looks, I mean, it looks kind of cool. It looks a bit robotic. I don't know. It looks, it's not like, it's not the worst shot ever. But I think it'd be a lot better for like action sport moments than just walking down the street, moving your sunglasses. It looked kind of weird to me. But I did use it on a dog. This isn't my dog, this is Cricket. Uh, say hi to Cricket. I'm house sitting right now for some friends in Vancouver and they have a dog named Cricket. And I did try to test the slow-mo out on Cricket. And I mean, that was a much cooler moment than just walking down the street. Uh, Things like dogs or like any animal that moves quickly, you're gonna get to see it in a whole new light. It's just gonna change your perspective on that creature, you know? So if you have a dog or a cat, you're gonna have some fun moments with the slow-mo. But every day walking around, eh, you know. 
All right, so a lot of things about this camera are good. Uh, obviously the size is a huge bonus for people who want to be carrying the camera every day. But you know, that does come with trade-offs. You're probably noticing that the audio quality isn't so good. Hopefully it's not like unusable, but it won't be as good as my normal videos. Uh, you're also gonna notice that the cinematography is limited because you can't zoom. You know, it's, it's a fixed, fixed lens. So the only way to zoom is to physically walk somewhere. So when you're close to someone, like, like I'm talking close to the camera right now, or you're doing some close-ups like walking on some logs or showing something that's close to you, it looks cool. But, I mean, if I wanted to get a nice shot of that bridge, well, I would have to walk to that bridge. And I'm pretty lazy, I don't wanna to walk to that bridge. And that's why God invented zoom lenses. So that's one sort of negative aspect of vlogging with the Osmo Action, or the GoPro, or any action camera like this. And I know that might be a fairly obvious point to people who are used to videography and stuff like that. But for anyone who's new to vlogging and just getting into this, I think it's important to stress the limitations of a camera that's this size. And another limitation is the next thing I want to talk about, which is depth of field. At the beginning of this video, when you saw I was sitting in the chair and I was, I was holding this guy in front of my big camera, you could see the depth of field when I held it close to the lens and I got that cool background blur effect. That's something that the DSLRs with their bigger sensor size are, are made for. That's where they really excel. Something like this, it's just a limitation of being in this small size with a small sensor. It can't really get the strong depth of field. In fact, a camera like this, well, you don't really want a strong depth of field because half the time it's, it's strapped to a helmet or something doing action sports, hence the name Osmo Action, right? So you're actually expecting it to keep everything in focus at all times. I think an action camera like this is a great tool to begin your vlogging or videography journey. It can shoot 4K, it can shoot time lapses, it can make a perfectly fine video. But as you start to progress, you're gonna notice limitations. So the honest answer is no, I couldn't use this to vlog. I'm not ready to replace my DSLR anytime soon. But I do see this as being an additional tool that I can add to my kit to get some really interesting shots that I couldn't otherwise get. Especially with the stabilization, if I want some nice stable shots entering into a room, or I want some, I mean, let's say I'm running or something, I'm doing a running video or some action video, going back to the name action, that's when this thing can do things that my bigger camera just simply can't do. So listen guys, that's about all I have to say for today. Hopefully through this video you got a good idea of how the Osmo Action looks, how it sounds, what the positives are, what the limitations might be. And that's it. Hope you have a great day. As always, I'm Dan from The New Travel, and I will see you next time. Okay guys, it's now about 9 p.m. The sun has just gone down, entering into blue hour, and this should give you an idea of how the camera looks in a slightly low light situation. Also, hi Nari. Hi. <laughs> what do you think of my new camera? Very small. <laughs> Very small, that's right. That's what she said. <laughs> okay, and finally we have the night test. I don't imagine that this will be a very good test because based on the little screen, I can almost not see where I am. But uh, hopefully that will be useful for some of you to know that you can't see very much at night. 